Hey guys, Carl Schuchert here, and on this video, I'm going to show you how to put together a plan for an online membership site. And so, first off, welcome to Member Studio, and uh, definitely want to show you guys exactly step by step the blueprint that I use to put together a plan of action when it comes to building out membership sites. Now, first off, before I get started, um, I want to explain to you the benefits of putting together a membership site like this one. One of the benefits is, is it's a great way to get yourself out there and build personal authority as someone that fits within your niche or industry. The other thing that it does for you is that it builds not only authority, but it also builds online presence. And Google and other places like that will actually reward you for putting content that's value-based out there. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different concepts on here, but let's just get started with the basics right now, and then we'll go into some of the advanced stuff later. So right now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to put together a plan. So what I use, and you should be able to see my screen now, is I use this um, thing called FreeMind because it's free. And it's a, a great way to build out mind maps quickly, easily, and fast. Now, it's been a little bit since I've used it, so I could, um, I could run into a couple of things, but I will make sure to fix it right away. This is a very simple to use software for the most part. It's kind of like basically take wherever you want and... Okay, so we're back here real quickly. Um, right here is... I'm going to show you too, before we get started, I'm going to show you... Uh, a program that I use. I'm gonna actually. I will leave the link to this available here um, below. But what you will first want to do is you want to download FreeMind, and on the link you'll just download it. So basically, once you're downloading it, you, you would click here, and this will actually download it for you on on a Mac. Now I do believe this is also available for you for. Uh, Windows as well and I will get the link the link will be below for that as well so that'll be the best uh, description I can give you on that now I'm gonna come right back here once this is downloaded and uh, started so I can go ahead and start it right now I'll actually I'll stick around and I'll show you how to uh, how to download this how to reopen it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into here replace. I had an application before, but it was, there was something wrong with it. it. Takes a couple seconds. It says 10 seconds or 5 seconds. A few seconds to download. Once it's downloaded, then you will have access to it. Um, may need this generator. We'll see. Okay. So let me open this up now. And we'll find the free mind. Sometimes when you're downloading stuff from the internet, Mac doesn't allow you the first time to open it. But let's see. Yeah, see now see how it says that? So what I'll do is I'll click double click or right click it, depending on what you're using, hit open. And then a box should pop up that says, like, are you sure this is from somewhere on the internet? Yes, I'm sure. So open. What's neat about FreeMind is it's like public access. So it's it's basically free. And um, there's a lot of other programs out there that charge you to do the exact same thing. All right, guys, so I'm back. Now, so on here, you should be able to start. So if I click on anywhere in here, it should be able to open up. Now, why is it not working? Oh, here we go. All right, so now that I've started, we'll go ahead and name this. So basically, I'm going to show you how I built out this site particularly. So let's go ahead and build a plan on how a membership site should look, how a syllabus should look, how everything should be created. So what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to go ahead and uh, write the name. So Okay, so Member Studio. And if you notice, there's a toolbar here. And basically what I want to do is I want to add a, uh, I believe, a leg or a node. 
a note, right? So new child or sibling. So it's like sister or brother, right? Let's see what child does. There it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start. So first we'll do an intro, introductions. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Introductions. If I cl click enter again, I don't have to do it. So I can actually just click here. So the first part of it would be um, building out a plan. And then after you have a plan, building out a modules resources lessons value ladder. I'll explain more on this on this stuff as we go. Um, marketing plan, equipment, let's just stop right there. Alright, so Let's go ahead into introduction. I'll double click there. New child note. So introductions would be like um, intro what you are going to learn. What you're going to learn. Um, how to's. what you are going to need so whatever else okay now let's build out a plan building out your plan so we basically have the introductions we ha we understand that so Building out a plan here is going to be more than a marketing plan. This is going to be basically the plan of the syllabus. Okay. So on the syllabus would have, um, and see this is the thing too, is I can actually take this, I believe, and move it over here. I was able to turn it. That's a cool thing too, is you can click on here and it'll open and shut these. So I'm basically got modules. So module one and syllabus. So what I would do is I'd probably go ahead and start naming some modules. So one would be basics. Two would be enter immediate. Three would be advanced. Okay. And three two okay. And really like this would actually be the syllabus inside of these so I could probably just delete this delete this whole node. Let's see. 
So basics. So I want to show you too, you can actually move this around. Alright, so new child basics. Okay, so basics would be first off I would start off with everything you need. So everything that you need. Okay. And let's put another child note on there. Equipment. Software. Um, outsourcing ideas. Content. And and scripting. And then with equipment, what I'll do is I'll put um, lighting, camera. Tripod. Backdrop. Chroma key. <coughs> Wait, um, grab. I'm just going to call them grabbers. I don't really know what they're called. But I'll show them to you when we get to that point. And what other equipment? Area to film. Extras. And these things would be like things that are just not needed. Just recommended. Okay. Now let's go to software. Okay, so what software do you need now? There's a couple of different ways you can go about software, and there's two different types of software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up here. Let's first talk about um, two different types of software. We could actually add another one here so we'll put uh, editing software why is that huh. editing software I'm misspelling it, but it looks like it's not misspelled to me. S O F T W A R E. Yeah. So we put basically what we put there is kind of neat, right? I can move that back or whatever. Whatever I want to do. Move that around. So, anyway, so we have web software. So, let's first talk about web software. So, web software. Could be uh, hosting. 
hosting a WordPress site, which I'm not going to recommend because it has a major, major learning curve, but maybe you're someone that already knows how to, um, someone that already knows WordPress. So if you already know WordPress, then you know that would be part of it. And then you could use, let's see, then you could use software such as Optimize Press 2. You could use Wishlist, which I use these, but I, it took me years. So if you're someone new, I really don't recommend this route, but maybe you're someone that, uh, <laughs> getting a message. Hold on. Okay, so these are some things like I was saying. You, you don't you don't necessarily need to do this if you're new and you don't know WordPress, but you could. And if you were new and you still wanted to use WordPress because WordPress, you know, there's some p positives too. I mean, like, for one, Google really likes WordPress because of the fact that it has a uh, blogging feature where people can be very interactive on them versus, you know, being on social media or whatever. So on that stuff, it kind of, it doesn't really... Um, it's, it's one of those things that if I would say if you don't know how to do it, don't do it. But if you want to know how to do it, then I'm, you know, I have another course that I can give you or that you could purchase that will basically teach you it or you could just outsource it. Um, you know, if you, if you don't have access to outsourcers that will build out WordPress sites, um, I do. Just contact me. Um, you know, they cost anywhere from, I'm going to say, anywhere from about eight hundred dollars all the way up to like five ten thousand dollars it just depends on what you want to do but I'm gonna show you some software that I use that uh, would be a lot cheaper and would be easy for you to learn and I'd highly recommend them that you learn them uh, for your business but again it just kinda depends on what you're trying to do now you could try to like I said you could just learn all the stuff yourself and then get like optimized press and wish list and stuff like that but you're still gonna have to learn each of these things and on top of that there is like a bunch, there's a whole bunch of plugins, so we'll put plugins. Um, I have a bunch of plugins. Like if you do want to learn, um, I have another course that I sell that uh, is very inexpensive. Um, it's like 47 bucks, and you will get access to tons and tons of plugins. In fact, the plugins will pay for itself over and over again. And if you don't know what a plugin is, don't worry. Uh, it's just, again, one of those things that. Uh, you'll learn with WordPress, but if you look at websites that are built on WordPress, there are things that like you go in, there's like a slider with a bunch of pictures on it, or there's a pop up box, or there's a landing page, or whatever. So, lots and lots of plugins, widgets. But again, this is all this is all based off of um, WordPress. Now, I'm not going to get too far into WordPress. Because, like I said, this is something that I do not recommend. Now let's talk about other services. So let's talk about uh, Smart Member. I don't know why this is saying it's misspelled. It's not. Oh, it's because it was capitalized. All right. So Smart Member is a, a truly amazing software. And I'll actually get in depth with some other training here on how to use soft, how to use uh, Smart Member. But the thing about Smart Member is that it was built with a bunch of wizards built into it. So depending on what you want to do um, inside of a Smart Member, you will be able to um, you'll be able to create websites quickly, efficiently, fast. You don't have to learn a lot of stuff. Though there is a little bit of a learning curve, as with anything. But it's nothing, nowhere as near as it was for WordPress. Trust me on this, guys. It took me like a year and a, a year to a year and a half to literally build out my first membership site. But it was good experience. I had to learn it and all that stuff. But why even do that these days? It's why incredible mar marketers out there like Chris Record or Russell Brunson, they both have two amazing, amazing pieces of software that I'm going to truly, truly recommend to you. So the other software I'll recommend to you is ClickFunnels. And I'll tell you why um, there's a difference between the two. Smart Member is like a directory, a resource, a launching platform. 
Um, it has it has a so support built into it. It has uh, bridge pages built into it, which are like landing pages that are dynamic. Um, it it uh, you can be, it has a Chrome extension where you could swipe information like YouTube channels and YouTube videos and basically like repurpose stuff like that. I mean, it's it's an amazing thing where ClickFunnels doesn't do any of that. ClickFunnels wasn't originally built to be a membership site platform. There is a membership feature built into it, but um, but I don't recommend it, actually. Um, I've used it, and I've used Smart Member. I use ClickFunnels, though, for a lot of other things. ClickFunnels is like an amazing piece of software for building out uh, marketing messages and stuff like that. And, and the cool thing is like you can share funnels with people. Um, you can buy funnels. You can. There's a huge, huge community of people that use it for launching products. And so for on the, say, like the front end of a, um, a membership site, I would use ClickFunnels. You don't have to. In fact, um, Smart Member does have sales pages that you can build inside of it. And uh, you can even hire like a developer or someone that can actually do code and code out a sales page for you. You can do it that way too. But um, the ease of use with ClickFunnels and if you're looking to build out a lot of membership sites, highly, highly recommend that you use it just because of that reason right there is because you can launch funnels and have upsells and downsells and have a whole thing built out and have it integrate with smart member where basically all of your cells will communicate directly to smart member and then smart member will handle it from there smart member has email like i said it has support um, has bridge pages it has uh, a thing called speed blogging where you can blog directly from anywhere on the internet I mean, it's just hands down one of the most robust, if not the most robust so uh, membership platform on the planet. And uh, it's by my good friend, Chris Record. So um, I've been able to uh, work in his office and pretty much see this thing grow from the ground up. So let's talk about Smart Member and what it does. And I'll even add that here. It's just so you guys will have this. Um, so let's go ahead, add a new child. And we'll talk about the first thing. So one of the first things that Smart Member does is it's a membership platform. Okay. The other thing that it does is it is a um, a it's a launching platform, really. And what I mean by that is being a launching platform is that it is. Um, it's it's a man it has management capabilities so it can actually like manage affiliates that want to promote your software or promote your membership site in fact you know the informational business is like a hundred billion dollar a year industry so if you kind of think about that is it, this is just a great opportunity right now to build out membership sites and you know every single membership site that I've ever really put out there and I launched um, I've made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And now I'm not, you know, I'm not going to brag and say I'm like one of the big guys in the industry, but from what I've learned by doing it, it definitely gives me the ability to ha greater my chances to have six figure launches, um, because of it. Now, mainly because I've gone down to sub niches and stuff like that, you know, I've had like $10,000 years directly from a membership site that I don't have to do much with. Um, I had a, a very small list of like 1,500 people and within that niche and I was able to, to, to get them involved and then I built software and stuff like that. But it's somewhere where to start. So using like FreeMind, it really just kind of helps you build out these ideas from your mind. So it's a launching platform. Um, it's a support um, software. It's a... JV management tool. Okay, it's a members management tool. It's an email called SmartMail. SmartMail autoresponder. Okay, it has um, bridge pages.
which is bridge pages is a dynamic a dynamic um, what do you call it? it's a dynamic landing page page software and just to kind of give you an idea of what um, what that means is take for instance you're a real estate agent or you're an insurance agent or you're a salesperson of some sort or you're in any business okay maybe even e-com that you're giving away something for free say you put a little video together on how to do it and you're directing a message directly to a target audience now typically when you see landing pages they're going broad and they're hitting out all these different niches or even they're they're niching it out into certain um, what do you call it? They're niching out into certain little demographics, but each time you do that, you have to build out a new web page or a new landing page for each time you do that. With bridge pages, it's dynamic. What I mean by that is you can change headlines, subheadlines, uh, buy buttons, videos, backgrounds. You can really customize it to that audience, and then basically you would change the URL, which is in the domain you would just change little parts in the URL and it would automatically change on the page without having to build a new page every single time. And then basically you just build out these URLs instead of the whole page and then you use those URLs in your traffic getting techniques, rather it's from like Facebook or YouTube ads or Google ads or whatever online that you're pushing traffic from, you would be able to use those dynamic URLs which would basically help with uh, getting email addresses and it's basically bridge marketing. Bridge marketing is like, it's been around for years but it's a very underused thing online and it's getting more and more popular um, because it's just a, a, it's a, a great way to, um, to get a message to a direct audience. So like if I was a fan of Metallica, which I happen to be, um, not so much like the new stuff, but like their old stuff I was into and you know, even some of their new stuff. But if I was like a Metallica band, you know, I love Metallica and I was sending out a message to um, teach people how to play the guitar, let's say, um, I would, and I knew that they were Metallica lovers, I could go to Facebook and they have a thing called Flex Targeting I don't want to get too much into that. I don't want to confuse you, but let's just say you knew about that. You could basically um, find people that are interested in learning how to play the guitar or play the guitar and are fans of Metallica. You could actually do that. And it would only pick people. It would actually, your ad would only place to people that are interested in both, but not one or the other. Okay, so they'd have to be interested in both. But what would happen is they would see that ad, and they'd be like, oh, I love Metallica. Oh, I can learn how to play their riffs right here. Easily learn how to play their riffs. Click the button, and now my landing page is going to say, like, welcome Metallica fans. Learn all their fav you know, all of your favorite um, riffs. And here's an example. And then the video has the guy, the instructor teaching, you know, he's playing. Uh, enter Sandman or Ride the Lightning or something like that and then they would click to get more information a little pop-up box would come up and get their information and then it would go to your sales page once you've collected that email address because even if they don't buy the first time at least you collected the email address and at least you know what they're interested in now think about this if you were in real estate if you were finding people that were interested in homes in a certain geographical location you could even break it down to a zip code to a city uh, to a state, however you wanted to do it. And then uh, you basically would have that thing where it would say, or, you know, even if I was, say, I was selling directly to real estate agents, I could say real estate agents of Keller Williams or or real estate agents of um, any of the big ones. Okay, I can't think of any, but any of the big companies out there, I could basically make my message bridged to that person, to those needs. Okay, so that that is a little small lesson about bridge marketing and um, it's definitely no, there's nothing else out there like it right now um, Chris basically built out the bridge pages thing now the other thing is called uh, smart member speed blogging now what smart member speed blogging is is a really neat tool that allows you to grab uh, videos content like other other people's content that they've already written about um, anything really anything that you see online that you want to use um, you could actually take that information and then put put it onto 
a membership site. Now, I will actually show you in another course exactly how to do that, but right now I'm just telling you that you can build out membership sites without your own personal information. You can actually do it with others, and uh, I actually do it with some of my courses. In fact, a lot of the free stuff that I like to give out, which will drive tons and tons of traffic, because Google will notice. Oh, look! And look, I'm not. I'm when when I'm at you know getting someone else's information, I'm not taking credit for it. In fact, I'm giving them credit for it. But if my site shows to be much more popular than that person that's getting credit for it, my site will actually uh, rank higher in Google. And it will get lots of free, free traffic. So sm the speed blogging, blogging uh, tool is a Chrome extension that would literally just give you tons and tons of free um, traffic that you don't have to do a lot with. And you just basically have to build it out. And you would just add it into You could add it into it as a blog or you can add it into as lessons. You make those lessons free. So like I said, a lot of times I won't even protect that information. I'll make it free and I'll give that other person total credit. They might even get people because of me that they offer products for. I don't care. In fact, when they put stuff on Google, for instance, it's free public domain. Once you do that, you basically sign a thing that says, hey, if anybody wants to use any of my videos, have at it. But at the same time, what it does is it gives them a backlink and it gives you popularity um, within Google. And like I said, if you do this a lot with a bunch of them, you could actually have a lot more traffic and then Google would see that in their algorithm and say, okay, this site has more authority over our YouTube channel that was talking about guitar riffs or whatever. So that's just one idea, okay? That's just one thing that you can do it with. Now, that's what Smart Member does. Um, that does more than that, but that's basically what it does. Highly, highly recommend that you get smart member uh, right away if you haven't done so already. Now, you don't need ClickFunnels to do this stuff. Like I said, there's sales, There's a sales page builder. Um, there's a, um, there's basically a bunch of different like referral sites. There's a, a, a page that you can build in there for building out JV pages and stuff like that. But it's not as clean. It's not gonna look as nice as you can do with ClickFunnels. Now, ClickFunnels does uh, obviously have a little bit more of a learning curve, but it's nothing like WordPress, like I said. So let me just explain to you real quickly what ClickFunnels does, okay? It has opt-in pages. It has, they have email. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, has opt-in pages, has um, landing pages, sales pages, up upsells and down down sells um, funnel <laughs> what's going on here funnel Funnel creation. So like OTOs. You can also build out pages of any kind, like um, like uh, like privacy notices and what do they call it? TOS terms of service support. Okay, buttons, buttons, pop-ups. They have this thing called click pops. Basically what a click pop is, is say you built a button and Say you built a button on your web page and you wanted something to pop up, maybe a little video, maybe a uh, whatever, okay, whatever. They clicked it. You could click and have a little video pop up in like a light box with a call to action, stuff like that built into it. It does a lot of really cool things. These sales pages too, I mean, they're really sweet sales pages and uh, you can make them mobile optimized very easily, very easily make them mobile optimized. It does have a light um, membership um, 
site builder. But it's nothing, nothing, nothing like Smart Member. Um, it also has a um, APIs for email um, affiliate and also has a um, sales box. Basically what that is, is just like, you know, people put in their credit card information, stuff like that. Um, that's built into there with uh, what they call bumps, which is kind of neat. Should be able to still see that. So bumps, and you know, there's there's more. I mean, there's more to this um, for ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels just does a ton and ton of stuff, and it does it really easily for you. And uh, they also include like hosting. I mean, obviously, you can take. They allow you to take the code and host it yourself on like Amazon, or if you want, or you can actually take all the code and then push on Amazon as like a backup. Because sometimes during like um, if you're launching a product, you want to make sure that your sales page continues to be up. Certain things like that, but um, other than that, I mean, ClickFunnels is a, just a simple to use, simplified the process of this stuff and um, made it to where you, you don't have to have or spend a lot of money on hosting, spend a lot of money on um, hiring someone to do this because it actually allows you to do that stuff yourself, okay? So that's ClickFunnels in a, really in a nutshell. Now the next thing is um, editing software and we'll talk about the ones that I use so and like I said I'll probably have a video so the main one I use is Camtasia not really sure if I spelt it right but Camtasia um, there's another one called um, uh, let me see if I find it here Should be able to see it here. I just I don't use it that much. So ScreenFlow. All right. So ScreenFlow. Um, you can use like iMovie. You can use like Adobe. Um, the Adobe is very very complicated. I've seen it in action. Um, it's expensive. There's others. There's a lot of others out there, but I use Camtasia, and I use it for Mac. Camtasia for uh, Windows is a lot more. Has a lot more that it does, but uh, for whatever you need, I mean, I use it. Works great. I use ScreenFlow sometimes, but prefer Camtasia. It's just easy to use. Um, one of those things. It's just it's just simple. You know, friend, easy to use kind of thing. Um, and so that's what I use there for editing software. Um, obviously, you could hire someone, you could outsource something to do all of these things. So let's talk about that. Outsourcing ideas is next. So what are some things we can outsource? Well, we can outsource um, sales copy. We can outsource um, web designers. If you want to outsource a web designer, hit me up. I would love to get you a quote uh, with my guys that I work with. And uh, I know a lot of people in the industry, so all of them need work, especially now that ClickFunnels is around. Okay, so uh, what else you can, you can use them for? To build out membership sites, okay? You can actually get out, you can, if you don't, if you're scared of this stuff and you just want to understand how it works, nothing wrong with that but basically that is that okay you can outsource uh, let's say you can make you can turn a camera on and that's about it okay so video editors um, what else uh, besides video editors you can do um, what's the other thing You know, while I'm thinking about this too, I've got a
All right, so we talked about web designers, membership builders, uh, video editors, um, graphics design. Design. And a um, couple of things to think about on graphics design is that, because I worked with a lot of different people with this, um, there's kind of two different people. There's there's artist, and then there's people that know Adobe. <laughs> and what I'll tell you what the difference is between these two is that um, artists are they're good for a lot of things, but but the thing is about artists is that you don't have to say here's my idea. You can just say here's what I want to do. You can just basically say, I want to create um, banner ads. So like, I'll just uh, add here what, what you would need these guys for. So banner ads, Facebook ads, thumbnails, um, logos, Okay, a lot of different um, different things that you would use them for. Okay, and then um, so I also wanted to put this here because there is. Let's see here. So think about this, guys. All right. So there's a lot of things we can we need graphic artist designers for outsourcing software. What I mean by that is this is like a management. It's like management software. So for instance, like my software development team, we've been we use it. In fact, we used it for our last software that we built called Now Driven. And um, and then when we were using it, I was like, gosh, this is something we all need because you know I use I've used a lot of different stuff. I've used uh, Jira. I've I use and still use. Um, Slack, that's kind of a new one that's come out. But the problem with these guys, and even like Torillo and stuff like that, problem with a lot of these software is that you get it gets lost into what I call the feed or the thread. And so my developers built something that we call Tracker. Tracker.net. And Tracker.net is not out when I was making this video for public sell yet, but it will be. Maybe by the time you watch this video, it's available. Just go to tracker.net and you will find it there. It'll be a very low cost. Hopefully you get in during the launch because that will be the best deal for people. But if not, it'll still be there and it'll be available. Now, um, let's talk about all the other ones. So Slack, I think it's called J-I-R-A, Jira. Um, uh, what's the other one called? Twillow? T uh, I forgot the name of it, but there's another one out there that's big um, that builds boards. Trillo or something like that. Anyways, it builds boards. Those are the main ones that people like to use. And then on top of that, I use a lot of Google. Docs like. Um, like Google Docs actually has a thing called Sheets which you can do like Excel sheets and they have docs which you can do like um, if you have like scripts or something read, written you can share it with someone else and then you can work back and forth there really neat you can add notes stuff like that it's really really neat stuff and then they also have like um, like a PowerPoint I forgot the name of it or it's is it frames mm. I don't know let me see slides okay so slides is the last one 
And basically that's like a PowerPoint presentation builder, but I use this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I use Slack a lot, um, pretty much because of the other team. I, I work with a team and they use Slack. So um, just kind of depends on what they want to use. But like I said, you know, we've got Tracker. Um, Tracker is, is awesome because to it, it's kind of like a support software in, in a sense, but for your, your vision, your idea, your dream, whatever you're trying to put together. And, um, and also too, we're building an app. So hopefully the app's available where you can actually, um, if you're on the fly, like this is the thing is like, I'm driving down the road and I have a great idea and I want to share it with my developer. I can go ahead and share it there first on the app and then I could break it down later on and then we can work on each thing. So kind of just a, you know, again, it's a neat thing. It's kind of like this uh, free mind software. So it's kind of like the track, you know, the tracker software is really neat, but the Slack works good, Jira, you know, those have expenses to them. Slack is kind of free, I think, for the most part, unless you, uh, like, have a big, huge team. But it's, you know, again, it, it it's just kind of depends on what you want to use. Now, let's talk about the next thing I have on the list here. I'm going to move this one up. Let's see. won't let me there's a way to do it I just let's see is there a way to do it here no not really so I can just I can quickly uh, touch bases on this one so how to use free content um, YouTube vids Okay, um, um, Vimeo, um, Facebook, you know, like Facebook feed or video you might find there. Um, and, the, you know, the one thing you want to keep in mind, too, like if you're using someone else's content, you know, I'm, I'm big about saying, you know, make sure to give them credit, but also, too, like I like to find finding people that, are that know a lot but they're a little bit under known or whatever that they're not doing they're not spending a lot of time on personal branding so that way it's you know you're keeping trying to keep people on your site and it's just more about the content itself so when, when you know when i'm talking about that so that that's just an idea um catch.me so the cool thing about catch.me is it's part of periscope and periscope doesn't really allow you to do too much personal branding and when it goes to catch.me, there's not a lot of personal branding there either. And you can actually play catch.me video feeds on Smart Member. So kind of a neat thing. Um, blogs. And blogs are free. People are giving out free content. Unless you're unless it's like a paid or something. Um let's see. What else do we got? And that's really about it. I mean, there's I'm probably missing something there, but on free content, that's where you would find it. You know, let me give you an example. So I'll go to YouTube. And now that I'm on YouTube, how to play the guitar. Okay. So I went to how to play the guitar. And look, here's a guy right here teaching about how to play the guitar. Right? There's a lot of branding going on here. But that's fine. I mean, this is, I'm not too, too worried about this. Personally, personally, here's the thing, okay? There's always going to be ads on these, right? But here's the thing <coughs> that I like about this the most, okay? This, this one thing is important, okay? I'm going to be able to, I don't have to know anything about how to play guitars, okay? This guy here already has a station, a channel, built out, I can subscribe to it, I can go here, let me see, let me just go here and see what, what's here, this guy has a whole station right here, teaching people how to play the guitar, okay, all kinds of basic lessons, actually this guy doesn't have as many as I thought, but he still has some, okay, 
he has them. And look, it looks like he's charging for some of these. He's smart, right? He's charging somehow here on YouTube on some of these lessons. But I'm sure if you did some research, you could find someone that doesn't isn't charging, like has all of the stuff for free. And then look, this guy has this one video to 24,000. Now that's not a lot. Um, you could even go and find like rock stars that are teaching people how to play the guitar. And that might be, might even be a better um, scenario. But let's just go here. You know, we could the thing about playing guitar, there's so much on here about it. So like I could pick Leonard Skinner or I could pick Metallica or whatever. This little button right here will highlight. I will click on it. And then what this is going to do is it's actually going to go to one of my smart member sites that I set up that I want to have it set up to. And it's automatically putting the information here. I go to media. There's the video. Um, I can I can add all the stuff right into a smart member site. So that's just an example on how to get to build out a membership site quickly without having any of your own content. And really, like I said, it's just give it away for free. Get the email address and then sell them stuff that they're interested in. Sell them physical products or sell them digital products or find find a course that someone else is selling that they want to JV with you on JVZoo or on ClickBank or, or one of the affiliate networks. And if you have all this traffic, then you could say, hey, guys, we've got all these training we're going to give you. And then you could build out your smart member site, basically helping people uh, and selling people that information. It's, it's pretty awesome, actually. So that's going to be on that part. Um, the next thing is going to be on scripting. So on scripting, let's talk about that. So on scripting... Um, Think of it like when you're building out a membership site, regardless of you're using free information or using someone else's information, there's always a start, a middle, and an end. It's kind of like writing a letter or even more of like writing a book. Um, there's always got to be like the initial hook to get people in, get people interested. That's kind of where your free content comes from. And then uh, once you've got them in, then you make them a buying subscriber. A buying subscriber is going to have a little bit better information than the free information, even though the free information needs to be high value. And then after that, there needs to be like a beginner, intermediate, and advanced level um, built in there. And then also you can make those your actual upsells. So like you could say beginner is $7 because $7 is a very inexpensive uh, price. You could have a highly, highly perceived value for seven bucks and people will buy it all day long because it's seven bucks, okay? Then they get inside the sales funnel, and the next part of the sales funnel is, this is all part of that value ladder that's down here, okay? But once they're inside that sales funnel, uh, we'll go into that. So literally, like, I'll have a whole training on this, but just to kind of let you know, there's a, um, what do you call it, a beginning, a intermediate, and advance right and pretty much like all of your all of this stuff is going to be like intros um, how how to's um, resources and action plans Okay, intermediate is going to be a little bit higher level. So, intermediate is going to be like, um, you know, a little bit more in depth. So it's basically the same things, but your how, but basically it's how tos. Okay, just much much more in depth how tos, um, directly with what you're doing. Um, could be also um, higher value. down loads okay interviews with other leaders and it's not hard to get interviews with other leaders because a lot of these guys they are they want the exposure they want and need the exposure for their business so that's not hard um, 
and then like usually like ending thoughts or close close cell next level okay and then inter and then the intermediate is going to be really or the advanced is really going to be the advanced stuff so it could be you know really depending on what it is you know if you're talking about building out a membership site you can really get into the advanced stuff that people don't really get from the other person like if you're selling selling something uh, for someone else like for instance if this was a bonus which it might be it could be it, it probably will be for other people's products um, it could actually help sell I mean not sell but give value to that other product so for instance like we're gonna do a lot of training on how to use smart member so some of the advanced features might be like how to use bridge pages bridge pages builder how to um, how to make your own graphics for cheap for free right um, how to get tons of traffic how to uh, how to monetize that traffic how to how to recruit uh, JVs to promote right so when if you're doing a launch how to launch uh, how to launch a membership course right see like I'm teaching you and like this site for instance I'm teaching you all the little things that you need to do, but on top of that, I'm teaching you why like our advanced course would be would have the highest value for someone because it's going to teach them how to do this stuff, right? So, how to get your buyers to buy more? How to write emails? How to keep your buyer's mind interested. How to keep your buyer's mind on your site. There's a lot of stuff you can do about that. So, so basically that's just an idea. And this, these are just some ideas. Some of the stuff might change um, as we go, but... Uh, that's that would be basically how I'd look at it. So if you can see here, the um, make it smaller, I guess. If you can see here, and I should be able to blow it up. But if you notice right here, I'm what I'm looking at is like advanced. So you'd have like beginner. So on, on the beginner, like I would have also too. Let me add one more thing here. Free, free, freemium. Okay, I'm writing freemium content, right? So I could get that. We talked about that, but I would put a bunch of freemium content there as well. And that's about it. So I'm gonna close these down just to keep our mind focused on what's next. So we just did scripting. For the, for the site, and you're gonna love it because each thing that we're going over, we're basically gonna show you as we go.
the software is can be a little bit buggy. Just thinking this will help. Alright, so the next thing we're on is video hosting. So who do I use? Okay, I use a multitude of different video hosts, but only because I've been doing it for a while. Okay, and I'll kind of go over the pros and cons of some of them. So I use EVS, which is Easy Video, Easy Video Suite. It's uh, Josh Bartlett's product, and I highly respect him, but um, he's got a new product coming out, so by the time this comes out, it might be available, might not. I will have a link in my resources tab for his products, and I do highly recommend them. They are awesome to use, but uh, one of the things you can use is Easy Video Suite right now, and it basically hooks up with uh, Amazon. Amazon is your... Um, your host, I think it's called E3, something like that. Who else? Okay, I I recommend EVS, but over EVS, I recommend Vimo. Vimeo, I believe, something like that. Yo, Vimeo. Reason why I recommend Vimeo: very new, be friendly. They have high definition. Um, you can push videos on anything. You can protect your videos. There's a price, I believe there's like an annual $200 a year price for it. could be different by the time you're watching this video, so do not hold me accountable to some of these things that I'm talking about, especially when I'm talking about third-party services such as Vimeo. The other one you could use is um, uh, Press, I think it's called Press Play. I like Press Play and uh, because it works with, uh, it works both with Amazon, with a, uh, S3, that's what it's called, S3, and uh, YouTube. Easy Video Suite works with YouTube as well. Um, and you can use both. Uh, press Play, I like using it for many reasons. Um, because it has a way, and if you're not a coder, you don't necessarily need to know how to use, do this, but it basically has a way to set up, um, to do like autoplay and stick in like calls to actions and stuff like that into your YouTube videos. And also it'll get rid of any ads. So if you're swiping content from someone else, you could actually trade it out um, for putting it on press play. Won't be able to build out a site as quickly, but uh, if, you're, if you wanna have the autoplay function and you don't want to have ads and stuff like that. I like using press play for that. But ultimately I would give my recommendation here to Vimeo or YouTube. Now the pros and cons to YouTube. There's a big thing about YouTube. One is you can monetize your videos. If you want to play videos like your own personal stuff, you can monetize it. You can make money off of it. But the bad part about it is just like I told you where I can swipe other people's content. And if you have, content that you believe is not a beginner or you feel like that it has a high value to it that someone should actually pay for. And when people pay for it, they actually value it more too. But um, the fact is the fact is if someone finds it there, they could actually share it with other people and now your paid for content now becomes free to other people that wanna share it on their services. And I'm not gonna mention any names, but there are some pretty big players in the field that um, for whatever reason, they don't want to pay the extra dollars for their uh, protected content. Now, there's another way to, another thinking on that too, okay? Let's say I build out like the most amazing membership course right here, which I, <coughs> which I am, but let's just say I put everything on YouTube, which I might. If you go out and you share with your friends my protected content from YouTube, what do you think your, your friends would think? They would immediately think this guy must be a leader because my friend just shared it with me, okay? Now, there's a feature on YouTube where you can unlist your videos and 
you don't have to monetize them. So people cannot push their ads onto your videos and they won't be listed. So people can't search your videos that you're trying to protect and keep private, but they still can be shared. So if someone bought it and they wanted to speed blog it onto something, there's a hint right there of something you could do. Um, it's now available to whoever else that wants to have access to it. Now, the thing is, is like if I did that, let's say I did that with a Chris record video or someone, um, but I know Chris, he doesn't, he likes using Vimeo and uh, it's because it just keeps his content private and then whatever he wants not to be private is available there as well. But the thing is, is with YouTube, you don't really have that, that control. You, you just can keep, you can protect it from YouTube, from them sharing it with anybody. You're just not going to be able to uh, protect it from the world and people that know how to just basically right click the video and then grab or capture that URL and then share it with their friends and now their friends are watching your content that you sold. But like I said, there's two ideas, two thought processes with that. <clears throat> and uh, I might even just for this video or for this course, I might actually just use YouTube. Now the other pro and con to this is that if you do use YouTube, YouTube is now going to host your videos for free. And all of those videos are going to be, um, they're all like, they're using the best technology, HTML5, and they're going to play really well on um, on cell phones and uh, very responsive. So YouTube has its pluses and minuses, but between you, uh, Vimo and YouTube, you got your pretty much your basis covered. They're both fairly inexpensive. Um, Amazon is very cheap. And if you use S3, it works great. Works really, really good, actually. And, um, you know, like I, I sometimes would use it just because of like certain features that it has versus Am, um, versus YouTube. Now, the thing about YouTube, too, though, that a lot of people don't like in the industry is the fact that if you do click on the YouTube button, what will happen is it'll open up into a YouTube page and then they could get sidetracked and they might see like your competitor and so a lot of um, a lot of marketers don't like that, but you know I just don't really let it bother me. I think if you have a really good, uh, insightful sales message, people won't click through. They'll actually stay on your page and they'll buy. So that's my thought on those. And um, so basically here too, like I, I went through here on the script, where was it? Script, we talked about, So I kind of had to go back to the basics on all this. It's software can be a little bit, you know, it's free. What do you expect? <laughs> free software. Not necessarily always going to have your everything in there, but um, so yeah, I, I put this together. Just amazing how this doesn't want to play nice with me. And who knows, by the time you watch this video, they might have uh, upgraded their software. And it's just a good resource, guys. It's just a really good resource to build out your plan. So <clears throat> right now we talked about uh, your plan. Pretty much everything you need to know.
<clears throat> All right, so let's see. Why am I not able to scroll up? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to save this so far. So let's do uh, save as so I don't lose this. Member Studio Blueprint. Let's make a new folder. Create folder. Blueprint. Mastermind. Okay, so I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. We talked about web hosting. So this is kind of basic, basically just having a plan, all that stuff. Now, if you notice here, I put intermediate and I put uh, advanced. And so basically, this is where I would actually pull and put this information onto here. So let's talk a little bit more about, the <coughs> about that. So the first beginner, you know, how to's was basically intros, resources, action plans, takeaways, freemium content. I think I've misspelled that, but... Okay. So basically, like, that would be... That would be that. And, and basically, I just did this, right? This is the action plan, and this is the script. So intermediate is now what I would do is, like, how to's... Video one. Video one would be about syllabus structuring. Lessons. Modules. New child note. Okay, and we'll have lessons on and pretty much this is going to be all how to's for the most part but so the first lesson would be on like um, how to set up your home or how to set up your studio what camera equipment to use um, how to set up a green screen. How to edit how to edit videos. How to keep your Engage, audience engaged. How to sell during your um, during your video during your education educational videos. Okay. How to set ads on your membership site to sell sell stuff. Right, so I kind of like, I would probably have some lighter stuff on there. That's going to continue to grow as I'm doing this, but for now, we'll just keep it on that. And then uh, let's talk about those modules. So I will go to add a new child. And then here we go. So module one would be um, showing, um, wait, how to set up. 
to set up your studio. How to build out your syllabus. How to actually Three. Editing. Um, how to, oops, four. Let's just say it has four modules. Something simple. We can put videos, three or four or five videos in each one. But let's say we have four videos right there. And um, so anyways, basically I would look at the four videos. What else would I need to put on here? Editing and then uh, launch and then uh, adding to site. And then launching. Launching site. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about advanced. All right, so on advanced, we would have, remember we have uh, how-to videos, which basically everything. How to vids. And then we have lessons. And modules. Guys, I, I apologize for some of my spelling. I'm not the best speller. I'm more, <laughs> I'm better at showing people how to do stuff that I am at spelling, but, um, so do definitely, definitely apologize for that. But other than that, um, I think you'll have great con you're still getting great content. Um, I joke around. I think I even heard Grant Cardone said that his first book he ever wrote, you know, he didn't really do, he didn't get an editor to come in and clean it up. And he got a lot of, uh, haters and stuff like that. A lot of people joking about his spelling and his grammar and all that stuff. And he said, Hey, look, I'm not the guy that teaches you how to speak English and write English. I'm the guy that teaches you how to make money. So while you're correcting me, I'm laughing my way to the bank with with New York Times number one bestsellers. So if you're someone that's going to critique that, that's not the way to win in life, man. You got to the way to win is if you're good at it, use that skill to help someone that doesn't doesn't that needs it and uh, you know, stuff like that. So like I have some book ideas that I want to get out there and I have an editor. I actually have a couple of editors that want to help me out. But, um, you know, someone like that could help someone like me in that instance. Because, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an English teacher. I joke around and I say English is my first and my second language. <laughs> Just joking. Anyway, so so we got that. So we, we, we talked about this. This is basically the same thing, like how-to, syllabus structure, like we wrote up top. So I don't really need to go into that. But let's add some childs here. So the biggest thing I would do with advanced is, like, how to sell... Uh, your course, your course, um, how to push traffic to your site, how to, how to recruit affiliates, How to network with JVs, what JV platforms I use, and what else would be important here? Oh, yeah. How to write a sales letter for copy. Okay, and that's another thing that you, like I said, on the outsourcing part, outsourcing ideas, is that you can actually um, hire someone that's a pro at those things. So then let's go to modules here. 
And again, you know, the, this, these things all can depend on how you want them to look. It doesn't necessarily have to, um, have to be the same here. I'm just showing you for this, um, for member studio, how it's going to be set up. Now, when you do get in, inside there, inside of here more, I might have changed some things from this plan. Remember, this is just an existing plan. I'm just, I'm basically masterminding with you live on how I do it every single time. I make changes as needed. In the book, uh, The Lean Startup, um, they talk about pivoting. So like going with an idea, regardless if it's good or bad, but getting it out there and then pivoting or um, pivoting while you're, um, you're writing it out because you might have a better idea for something that you didn't think about at the time. So just letting you know, I'm giving you a heads up on that. Now modules would be like, the first part would be selling your course. Um, uh, let's see here, traffic, traffic. Um, networking and and uh, recruiting, recruiting JVs. And how to come with, let's see here, sales course. And it'd be like online sales course, let's see here. Okay, and that's really about it <clears throat> on those, right? So we kind of have all those set out now. Next thing we got here is resources. So I'm just gonna jot out a bunch of resources that come to mind. But, uh, so like Smart Member. Um, Quick Funnels. WordPress. Kind of already talked about that, but I'll add some notes to this one. Like if you're gonna go down the optimize, if you're gonna go go down the WordPress rabbit hole, I mean those are the two things I recommend out of anything that you're gonna do out there. Um, YouTube, Vimeo. EBS, press play, what else would be good, um, where to outsource, I can add to this one. Upwork. Okay, those are the main ones that I use. There's obviously more out there, but those are the main ones that I use. Skype, Slack, um, Tracker.net when that comes out. Freemind. Um, there's others too. I mean, like this FreeMind software, it's free, but it it is a little bit buggy. But it's been around for a while, like I said, and um, you know it's free. I can't you can't complain. And look how easy it is to use. <clears throat> what are some other ones that are good? Um, Amtasia.
I maybe what was it the one I was looking at? Screenflow. Also too, I saw something else here that I use. I use a scrapple. there's anything else here that I use that I would recommend. Screencast-O-Matic. Something like that. Just seeing what else we got. I think Gene was one of them I just saw. Audacity. Make sure I spell that right. P U D. Gene. Okay. Some of these are free, some of them cost money. I'm going to try to save you as much money as I can. But uh, these are basically, this is the list of resources, man. This is the list. This is the list. The list that you want to use. All right. <laughs> I know. I know sometimes I get a little bit weird. Sorry about that. Ah. All right. So that's pretty much the resource list. I'll probably, um, actually, I got another one. Dark Post Profits 3. Let me know. Chris Records coming out with that. Highly recommend it because it's all about video. It's all about ads, okay? Facebook ads. The new one that's coming out, it's not gonna it's gonna hit more things than just Facebook. But uh, great, great product, and it'll probably include one and two with it, so I recommend that. Um, these are all like the biggest things. Let me see. There's another one here. Video Genesis. I learned tons and tons and tons about video from Andy Jenkins on Video Genesis, and uh, I would recommend it. So I'm going to put it here as well. And I will. And, and the thing is about my resource list is I'm going to have um, I'll have links to my affiliate uh, my affiliate links to them. So however you got my course, rather it be a bonus, or you paid for it, or you got it somehow. Um, you know, hey, do me the favor and help me uh, feed my family and that kind of stuff by using my link um, because I'm sharing all this with you. I'm teaching you guys how to do it. So I would highly recommend that if that you do. All right, so I'm going to close that one up. I'm going to delete this one because we already talked about all the lessons. Okay. Value ladder. I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna delete that one too because we pretty much talked about it. Actually, what I'll do, I will keep it up. Here's why. Free, free, high value. This is like your freemium stuff or the stuff you get from other people. But usually I like to um, have tons and tons of value for free, okay? Um, level one, paid. Level two, paid. Level three, paid. Level four, paid, and then and then back into offers, and then high and okay. So let's say this first, oops, 
like a seven dollar product. Forty seven dollar product. Could be all over. I mean, the thing about this this value ladder too is the fact that some people's front end are hundred hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, okay? Could be. Okay. I'm just saying depending on the course, depending on who you are, a lot of things go into factor. If nobody really knows who you are, you probably want to start out with a seven dollar course. Unless you have a lot of connections with a lot of people who have a big list and that they're going to pump you up as an authority figure or something like that. So when you're starting out, I wouldn't go that high. It just depends. I mean, my first membership course, and it's still up, and it still makes me reoccurring income every single month. I charge um, $97 up front and then $17 a month. And I have no, I really don't have a value ladder with it. It's just a flat rate. I just felt like, I just felt at the time that um, that everybody has value ladders and everything. And, and in fact, when I first sold it, I did sell with a value ladder because what I did is I, I said, you know, as a bump up, would you like to have access to this for life? And I put a gold membership in there where they paid $47. And they also got access to my so or $470. And they actually got access to my uh, software. And I was actually really surprised at how many people took me up on that that offer and then I took it away forever and I might bring it back I mean it's just one of those things that I just haven't had time to get back to but um, I am moving it off of WordPress and over to smart members so while I do that I might actually have a bronze silver gold package and have that one package that literally uh, <clears throat> basically but I, the thing is I did I did the bump ups in the sales letter so it just depends on how I want to do it but this is how a lot of people do it so 97 to 2 97 and then you know 497 to 997 back end offers would be uh, webinars and physical goods just depends right and then if you're a ma you know if you're doing a mastermind this could be five thousand dollars to I've seen fifty thousand fifty thousand dollar masterminds okay just depends and you know that could go even further from there and you know <clears throat> kind of like this to this back end offers I like about this is that it could be like um, software and partner partnerships. I like to put that there because for one, for myself, I have a software development team and an email team and stuff like that. And we actually, if you are interested, I'll put that out there. But if you have an idea for a piece of software that you think people would buy, send me a message with details. Okay. Good details. I mean, I'm, I won't, I'm not going to I'll even sign an NDA if it's, you know, if it's sounds like it's good, but, and, uh, if it's good software idea, my software team will quote you for it. And, um, yeah. And basically I've had a lot of problems with outsourcing. It can happen with people you don't know and trust and stuff like that. So I have a team that I use and I trust and, uh, they do a fantastic job on building out websites and stuff like that. Um, building out software, sophisticated software, and then also, too, I'm kind of open to partnerships, but it's something that I'm very, very picky with. Um, as you probably know me from a few different ways, but some of the ways you might have known me is that I only like to get myself behind stuff that I believe in, and so I have to absolutely believe in, in it to be a partner. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I wouldn't be open to helping you build it. So if, if you have a good idea, um, shoot me a message, and if I get back to you, then that would probably be for good news. So keep that in mind. Um, High-end masterminds, that's it. Marketing plan, pretty much we'll go through this quickly. Marketing plan. So marketing plan is about sales, right? And if you're new, there's a couple of things that you have to, have to, have to, have to do, okay? One is product has to be done, okay? This whole product has to be done. 
Because if you go to a JV or you build a sales page or you even market it to your own list, if it's not done, you can't sell it. And other people that want to look at it when they're available, which might be the only time you might be able to catch them, if it's not done, they're going to say, hey, man, this is incomplete. Don't ever talk to me again. I mean, the thing about the industry is that, you know, these guys get hit up left and right. And if they don't know who you are, probably not going to do business with you unless you have something really cool and sweet and then it's done. Okay. All right, so sales pages, sales, sales swipe, which is like email marketing swipe. Um, banner ads, Facebook ads. Um, OTOs, if you decide you want to have one-time offers. And a plan of action for recruiting JVs. And uh, how to How to recruit how to recruit affiliates contest JV page leaderboard So you didn't know this, but I'm actually teaching you in this course <clears throat> how to um, how to recruit JVs. Those are the people you want to recruit in your business um, if you're trying to launch, launch products. But at the same time, I'm also going to show you how to sell your course regardless if uh, you're trying to do a launch. Okay, that's not necessarily, right? Now let's go to the next one. And we're almost done here. So the next one is called equipment. So can... Camera, camera equipment, um, filming, filming equipment, lighting, green, green screen. Um, teleprompter. What else? Tripods. Studio. Equipment. Um, mics. I forget that. That's really about it. This, my friends, is how you do it. So we've got our blueprint. Uh, remember, I did tell you that I could make some changes along the way. But, for the most part, this baby is done. For the most part, this thing is done. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. I hope you found a, a lot of ideas here and um, you know really just helps you out. Help you out with putting your membership site together. Remember, you gotta start with a plan. You have to have everything planned out, set up, ideas have to be set, and then you basically just fill them out. So basically that's what I'm gonna do. I am basically, I'm just gonna show you how I did this. Really nuts, soup to bolts, right? Nut that's the bolts, whatever, however they say that. All right, guys, so this is Carl Sugar, and uh, over and out, we'll see you on the next video.